Now this afternoon, as we sat down to prepare our story list for the show, two unusual headlines caught our attention, two very interesting yet frightening stories. The first one was about self-replicating robots. Robots that can reproduce, create copies of themselves, make babies like humans do, robots. The second story was about a tech firm which is offering money to people to have their faces imprinted on robots to create what they call robots with human faces. Now, I don't want to jump to conclusions or question the intention of the scientists involved. But it's hard to not ask this question. Have these people never read science fiction? They're creating robots that can multiply and machines that will look like us. What could possibly go wrong? Well, that's the question we'll try to answer tonight because they've not been able to answer it themselves as we decode the many dangers involved with such experiments and understand the many adverse consequences they can lead to. We'll begin with the reproductive robots. They're being nurtured in the United States. Scientists have created robots that can produce an offspring. They're calling them xenobots. This is what they look like. These tiny organisms that you see, these spherical clumps, they're xenobots. And they're not made of metal or plastic. They've been created from biological tissues, which essentially makes them living robots. Robots that can move on their own, heal on their own, and now, of course, reproduce on their own. How exactly were they created? By assembling stem cells from embryos into synthetic life forms. Allow me to explain. I know it sounds complicated. In order to design these xenobots, scientists first created random 3D designs on a supercomputer, like the one that you see. Simulated blocks of skin and heart cells that can move on their own. These blocks, or configurations, were then assigned tasks through an algorithm. What kind of tasks? Like walking in a certain direction, basic things. The most promising con con configurations here the ones that performed the tasks well, were then taken to a lab to be injected with life. Life taken from African clawed frogs. These toads that you see, they're the source of life in xenobots. The species is found in sub-Saharan Africa. It can regenerate its skin when wounded. So this is what scientists did. Take out skin and heart cells from the embryos of these organisms and then inject them into 3D blocks through tweezers and electric tools. Once injected, these blocks were kept in dishes of water to keep the frog cells alive. And they did stay alive. And all of this was done in 2020. Not only are these creatures alive and kicking, they're reproducing. They're creating copies of themselves, just like molecules do. So what are they doing? First, they release loose cells, then they smush them into clusters, swash them with water, and if the cluster is large enough, within a few days it takes a new life. It, evol it evolves into a child xenobot. It does sound like a fun experiment, but the question is, what's the point of it? What are these xenobots for? What are they going to do? Here's a human question for these living robots. What is their purpose? The scientists are yet to decide. They're not sure how these xenobots can be used. But they've suggested some immediate applications. Here's what they can do. Collect microplastics from waterways or wipe away cancerous cells inside the human body. And these are all suggestions. Suffice to say, the scientists themselves do not know at this point. Now consider this. Right now, these organisms are reproducing. Tomorrow, they could grow nervous systems, develop a cognitive ability, take decisions on their own. And if you've seen science fiction films, you'd probably know how this ends. Not well. We're creating independent life from animal tissue. Microscopic robots that can reproduce. Forget about them going rogue or evolving into something dangerous, just imagine what happens if they end up in the wrong hands. And I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. Because this experiment, the one that I just told you about, was partially funded by the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. 
It's a federal American agency that oversees technological innovation for military use. Need I explain further? The involvement of the military in such a scientific project does not inspire trust. Neither does imprinting human faces on robots. Not a good idea. And that's another thing we want to discuss. A tech firm is gearing up to launch a new line of human-looking robots. Robots with a quote-unquote friendly face. The name of the tech firm is Promobot, and no, it doesn't plan to generate these friendly faces through computers. They're looking for actual humans to lend their facial features for these machines. What do you get in return? 200,000 US dollars. That's the amount of money they're offering, the company is offering. It says it is open for applications from all races and genders. But the applicant must be above 25 years of age. What will happen once your application is selected, if it is selected? Well, you'll be made to sign a contract that will allow your appearance to be used for a robot for an unlimited period of time. This will include your voice too. The applicants will be made to record 100 hours of speech material to make a robot not just look like you, but also sound like you. Now, first of all, all of this is creepy. Letting a robot use your face and voice forever. It's almost like giving away your identity to a machine, letting a company do whatever they want to do with your face and voice. Plus, it's dangerous. You may get paid, and paid well, in return for selling your face. But think about the potential risks involved. If you know about deep fakes, you already know what this could involve, what could be done with your face. Fabricate videos of you. Use your face to commit a crime. Use your voice to intimidate someone. I'm not saying this company is going to do it. But think of the possibilities. The fact that a robot will have your face increases the risk of all such crimes. So let me say this, making robots look like humans, enabling them to reproduce may have some profound outcomes for science. It could even benefit mankind. But there's a bigger chance of it spelling doom. In the last, if the last two years have taught us something, it is this. Science is not always revolutionary. It can also be devastating. If one virus can threaten human existence, reproductive robots in the hands of militaries can do much worse. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.